Naked Artist Exposure. What exactly is this channel? I am Preston McCall. I am a painter, a commercial artist, a graphics designer, and I make videos. I produce these videos to inspire and stimulate other artists and interested people. From the history of art with images and observations about art and art history, I enjoy showing some of the interesting discoveries I have found. Being a painter myself, I approach art history from a different vantage point from most academic art historians. I do respect art historians greatly, as they certainly have filled my understanding of art considerably. My position is more from a painter's perspective, and not just from some academic intellectual point of view. I studied at the University of Kansas in the 70s, and I studied painting, art history, and architecture. I saw firsthand what the art historians had opinions about art that, from a painter's point of view, did not always line up with what I actually saw in art. It really is a very broad subject and full of many opinions, but I see that it is a visual language, not just a subject about which everything can be written. Many theories are promoted explaining how some painter used some magic theorem to design his composition, sense of color, or symbolism of the elements of the work. Okay, interesting theories. I get that. But imagine where it comes from. For centuries, many of these esteemed scholars wandered through museums or collections of important paintings and tried to assert some logic on what was happening in these masterpieces. They invented triangular compositions. They proposed some set of definitions about the style and symbolism of painting at some particular period. Is it mannerism? Is it Baroque? Is it by Renaissance? The reality is that it is just some painters were intrigued with colors and paint to the point that they produced some incredible pieces based on their own ideas apart from what some later art historians would decipher. The painter followed his heart and imagination, but also looked at what other work was being done at the time and tried to fit in a bit. Then there is the reason many painters painted, especially in the Renaissance. Paintings told a story. Many people back then could not read, and a pictorial story was like seeing it in a good cartoon. They could understand the glory and majesty of what was being depicted. Just imagine going into a long, boring lecture about some subject by some boring lecturer and compare that to the Technicolor movie on the big screen. The visual communication tells the story so much better. Churches realized this, so they hired painters to illuminate their altars and church walls to dazzle and inspire their subjects. They did not have television or radio to broadcast their story, but they did have technicolor of sorts. Paintings served their purpose as well, and the competition for painters became more and more intense. Then the royalty needed portraits. They did not have photography, so paintings of the king were essential to broadcast his omnipotence and authority. Other wealthy patrons wanted some slightly scandalous mythological paintings based on Greek or Roman gods to portray naked beauties and that delicious flesh. Great stories of the symbolism emerged as these paintings seemed to tie in the ancient classicism with the then current needs to justify various points of importance. Was it just some soft porn or some intellectual fantasy? Why were all the figures naked? Didn't they have clothes back then? Many periods of paintings emerged. Distinctive styles evolved. Some painters were treated as rock stars and lived opulent lives. Most suffered under the patronage of some autocratic patron who treated the painters with hot and cold respect. The painter was profoundly the slave to the patrons. Then, in the 1880s, photography 
became the main thing. Suddenly, a patron did not have to sit for hours to have his portrait painted. Painters began to look elsewhere. Painting of landscapes and still lifes became more and more important. Art became more about the decoration for the walls of homes and estates, and not just some accoutrement for the most wealthy people. Impressionism took over. Painters were now free to just paint and experiment with what they wanted to paint and with what they found curious and visually interesting. It would have been great if that's all it ever became, but slowly the art dealers saw ways to make money. They supported many painters under contract where they paid them salaries for some number of paintings each month. The dealers sold the paintings at a respectable markup and profits became the main motive. They began to see if they promoted and merchandised their selections, profits increased. The common person saw new and exciting changes in what was perceived as good collectible painting. Most painters could not sell their work more than a hundred bucks a day's money, but some exploded. For instance, Monet, an impressionist in the late 1800s, was considered France's most important painter and became wealthy. Others became superstars, Matisse, Picasso, Salvador Dali. Painting became a self-introspection of what the painter was really intrigued in. Art became more about the painter searching inside his own head for something that excited him and he felt was worth spending the time to develop. Not just some imagery that some patron wanted to see on his wall, and of course, they had to shock and awe the public, which also became kind of a game for many of the painters. Just look at Baltus who early on openly admitted he was trying to push the limits of what sexual perversions he could portray in order to get some good press and sales. It worked. But is that art? Wealthy Picasso thought so, and he bought one of Baltus's paintings for quite a sum of money. Jump ahead to today. Someone tapes a banana onto a wall. I guess he was paying homage to that Warhol print of a banana. Who knows? Or how about Marcel Duchamp taking a print of the Mona Lisa and drawing a mustache on it? Then Rauschenberg did the same, but then he erased the mustache as his expression of painting. Some of today's painting has become more of a thinking contest and less of a craft of being able to handle the draftsmanship of painting towards some lofty goal of delineating the painter's idea of where his art is really headed. Now today we have NFTs. Wow, people pay millions for what? We also have galleries paying giant sums of money to exhibit and promote some artists at these mega art fairs. Does it work? It does. They make people think because they are the big dog, we can all learn from them. They want to teach us how to pee in the highways with the big dogs. That sounds to me like a lot of hokey pokey. So where is this all going? Well, there are still some very accomplished painters who are painting pictures from their heart using fine draftsmanship and well-executed painting techniques. Yes, there are still painters who are actually painting pictures expressing their inner visions of where they think art is headed. You just have to brush off the chaff and look for what inspires you. Painting today is still a most interesting thing. It is an unregulated industry and there are many, many people out there all trying to define it as something they see as vital, important, and valuable. Is it really just about shocking the viewer to evoke some inner misunderstood emotions? Is it still about some painter's search for something inside him or her, which is roughly defined as beauty? The only answer to this dilemma is to simply keep looking and look with open eyes and less chatter from the experts on the sidelines who are just trying to steer us away from what art should be. Enough said. I mentioned I am a painter and I look at art and painting from a painter's perspective. 
It is still the most intriguing subject for me, but it may just be some other over-intellectualized subject that seems impossible for most people to relate to. Okay, I get that. Just keep looking, and you just might have a major conclusion, like when I stood in front of the Mona Lisa and saw for a brief, brilliant second a timeless beauty that I've never been able to feel so vitally enhanced since then. Just keep looking. If you like seeing these videos about how an artist talks and shows great art, hit the like and subscribe buttons. It does help me make more of these. When I see some go somewhat viral, I ask myself, why that one? It gives me a feeling that perhaps others can appreciate how interesting some of the work is and how just seeing it speaks in a visual language that we have somehow smoked out in favor of some politics or news story that will be gone in a day or so. Art lasts. It is timeless. We should all see that it is still a marvelous thing, even 500 years past the Renaissance. I am Preston McCall, and I thank you for watching, and I appreciate your comments. Thank you.